So in the second part of our discussion, Will, I want to talk about uh, cryptos and the FTX fallout, in particular uh, Coinbase, what's going to happen with other exchanges next. You do manage a Coinbase daily ETF, a 1.5 times Coinbase daily ETF, ticker C-O-N-L. So let's talk about that first. The general concern amongst the crypto uh, crowd is that, of course, uh, centralized exchanges are no longer to be trusted. DeFi is next, and people should all withdraw their money from uh, centralized exchanges. That's an extreme kind of sentiment. Not everybody can and will do that. But it does beg the question, is Coinbase next to fail? I'll just let you answer that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's quite a question. I think, um, you know, none of us, None of us are in a position to know, you know, what the next uh, domino to fall may be. But I think that um, there's more resiliency in that business and Coinbase's business mm -hmm. than some of these other businesses. You know, one of the key things that you know, caused uh, FTX to fall and indeed some of these other players like BlockFi has been lending. Um, and lending, yeah. certainly, you know, that was one sort of famous thing where Coinbase you know, were not allowed by the SEC to do their, their lending program. You know, so a lot of that business is based around trading um, and around custody. And again, that's a, that's a US listed company, onshore you know, listed company. Um, so I, I think Coinbase is in a much, much different position um, than some of these other entities. Um, but obviously time will tell as to you know, what happens in crypto. Clearly you know, the, the, the share price of Coinbase has been affected dramatically um, just by the drop in crypto, by the by the drop in crypto trading, and of course, if crypto goes to ten thousand dollars or or even less, uh, the price of Bitcoin, I should say, rather than crypto more broadly, you know, who knows what that does to not just Coinbase but to to other actors in the sector. So I think watch this space. Why would an exchange's valuation, just broadly speaking, and we'll get into the assets that they hold, why would an exchange's valuation drop dramatically just because the prices? or the underlying valuations of some of the coins being traded on their platform drop. When you think about it, they make money through a lot of means, through commissions, through, uh, through trading. But even in bear markets, uh, trading volumes are usually still high, unless there's just absolutely no interest in trading one, one way or another, right? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's obviously a function of a couple of things, David. I mean, that was a growth, it is a growth company. So you know, part of the valuation is based on the number of new accounts. So, you know, one signal is how many new customers are coming to that exchange and opening up accounts and depositing money with the exchange. And then the other part is what you were talking about, which is, well, how much volume is going through that exchange? And clearly, they're making uh, a percentage of that volume that goes to the exchange. And the fear is that when you get uh, into a bear market type scenario, yeah, the, the volume could still be high, but the reason why I think you know, valuation has come down is that people expect volume to be lower, and that's a result of you know, don't have, not having the customers, um, you know, the new customers coming on the platform, maybe be losing customers, as we saw certainly with, with the Robinhood situation. Um, but I think more importantly, people just kind of falling out of love with the asset class, and therefore doing less, trading less, because let's, let's face it, the majority of people have lost money in crypto this year. Um, and when you lose money, you have less money than to reinvest. And you, know, you might not even, you might not even you know, re-engage at all. Now, is that, is that a stock that you've decided to uh, create an ETF based on popular demand, based on interest from investors? Or, uh, or did you see a long-term future of the company that might uh, suggest a higher valuation? What was your rationale for uh, opening up this ETF? So the, the rationale is that we have one of these products in Europe okay. um, already. So we've been running that for a while. Um, it's very successful because it's still difficult for a lot of, um, let's call them regular investors, to get exposure to crypto within a brokerage account. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, people can go and open up an account with a Coinbase or, or any other company directly. But in terms of putting crypto in your brokerage account, um, there's still some limitations around that, and particularly when it comes to leverage. So the Coinbase ETF, uh, levered Coinbase Conel, you know, gives investors a leveraged exposure to the stock of Coinbase. So think of it as a proxy for crypto itself, but you can put it in a brokerage account, um, which does make it appealing to a lot of people. Well, what is your overall view on uh, the crypto markets then? The FTX fallout has certainly dampened sentiment and confidence overall. Um, do you think that uh, perhaps uh, 
a prolonging of the crypto winter can happen, or perhaps, uh, like you mentioned earlier with the stock market, uh, we may see a recovery at some point very soon. I, I'm, more, I'm more bearish about crypto um, purely for the reasons that if interest rates can continue to rise, mm -hmm. which they will, um, as a non-interest bearing asset that has no you know, tangible value, I think other people or investors more broadly will look to other areas of the market, whether it's the equity market, the bond market, the commodity market, um, and we'll, we'll find areas of that more attractive. I, I just think that you know, we're in a situation where you know, we could go down much further into the Bitcoin price, you know, maybe $10,000, something around that in an environment where you know, interest rates continue to rise uh, and we go into a recession. So I'm not prepared to say that um, it's, it's attractive at these levels, not for me at least. Um, I think it's got further to go. Um, and again, I think just you've got to be realistic about the environment that um, because there's no interest from it, you're looking now at uh, some of these asset classes being more attractive, I think, than, than crypto. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Will, I appreciate your thoughts. And uh, thank you for uh, coming on the show today. Best of luck with your funds. And I hope to speak with you again soon. Thanks, David. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lynn. Stay tuned for more. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.